Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we share my final review of the Tone X pedal. I have already done a lot of videos and tests and now I want to summarize all my findings. Furthermore, for the first time in my channel I will introduce a new way for comparing tones, which is called the Null Test, a pretty scientific way to compare modelers and real amps. By the way, you can purchase the Tonics profiles used in this video following the link in the card above. Let's start with the demo song. now describe the pedal. First of all, the Tonix is an amp or gain pedals profile loader. It is part of an ecosystem composed by a computer plugin which is also able to profile amps or gain pedals, an iPad app and the Tonix pedal itself which can load profiles done with the plugin counterpart. This is a very smart solution as you can basically profile your amps and use them with the IK plugin for recording purposes, or you can load the profiles in the Tonix pedal to play live. Furthermore, the plugin profiler allows you to use your audio interface and your mics and preamplifiers that could be of a higher quality compared to the ones included in the Quad Cortex or the Camper. That uh, being all in one solutions cannot compete with professional audio interfaces and preamplifiers. Furthermore, the pedal offers three effects that are a noise suppressor, a compressor and the five types of stereo reverbs. Three springs, one room and one plate reverb. You can access the effects pressing the parameter knob and then browsing the settings with the knob itself, which is not so user friendly. I mean, I would have preferred some direct buttons to access the effects. Also the screen is pretty small and there are no info about the status of the effects. I mean whether they are on or off, which is once more not so user friendly. You have the typical amp controls with gain, bass, middle, treble and volume, a knob to select the tone models of a current preset and another one to change presets. With the three foot switches you can load a preset or bank up or down. You can store 150 presets totally. Furthermore, you can load your own IRs or use the IK Multimedia VIR Multi IR cabinets. In terms of I.O., it has a guitar input, unbalanced stereo out, an headphone out, MIDI in and out and an input for an external controller. Therefore, it can be easily integrated in an ampless pedal board with your favorite pedals, controlling everything with a switcher like the Boss ES8. It can be used as a 2x2 USB channels audio interface 
at 24 bit and 44.1 kHz. Here I have two cons. The first one is that the USB is not Type-C, which is a bummer, as Type-C is reversible and more user-friendly. The second cons is that you can record at 44.1 kHz, where I typically record at 48 kHz. On the other hand, the guitar converters are at 24 bit and 192 kHz, with a dynamic range of 123 dB which is a pretty high value. It runs at 9 volts and 320 milliamperes. It has an aluminum chassis, which should be pretty robust, even if we need the proof of time. The dimensions are the ones shown in the screen. The weight is 0.9 kilos and the price is around 475 bucks. Let's now hear some more sounds. Welcome in the more sound section of this video, where, first of all, I will let you hear the Tonix versus a real Friedman twin sister and Pin Taco versus two. And then we will also compare the Tonix pedal versus the Quad Cortex and the Camper with a very scientific test, introducing what is called the Null Test. Basically, I will send a DI guitar signal to the real plexi and then to the modelers. Then I have aligned perfectly the resulting waveforms and then I have flipped out the phase of the modelers. You know that if you align two waveforms that are equal and you flip the phase of one of them, you get basically silent. Therefore, Flipping the phase of the modelers versus the real tube amp, we can scientifically verify how close they are and which one is the closest to the real amp counterpart. Let's start. <laughs>
Final considerations here, and please notice that these are gonna be my personal opinions for my specific use case. And I have purchased the gear used in this video with my own money, therefore I'm free to tell you whatever I want. Now, first of all, the pros. I like the ecosystem. I mean, you have uh, the plugin, you have the Tonix pedal, you have the iPad app. The ecosystem is very flexible and you can basically set up the rig you prefer the most. Furthermore, the possibility to have the plugin in your DO and then the same sound in the pedal for playing live is very handy, especially if you have amps to profile. Then I would mention that it sounds good and the profiles are very accurate. The Quad Cortex is pretty close Actually, in the null test, they are really head to head, but I prefer slightly the frequency retained by the tonics. Actually, you can check out the null test in order to verify which one you prefer. Another pro is its flexibility. You can basically build an ampless pedal board with all your favorite pedals, at the end, achieving a pretty personal sound combining pedals in a unique way. And in fact, I think that this pedal is perfect to play my own music and to find my own specific tone. I can put my amps inside it and I can combine it with my favorite pedals, which is very cool. And this is also my first cons. I mean, the Quad Cortex, the Boss GX100 or the MG30 are all in one unit that provide me with the, how to say a greater peace of mind. I mean, for live use, less things can go wrong with an only one pedal board, where with the Tonix you have to combine many different pedals and each of them can fail. Another cons I would mention is that it is not so user friendly. For instance, it has a few effects, actually a compressor and a reverb, and it would have been a pretty handy feature to have a direct switch to switch on and off these effects without having to browse the menu via this uh, very small screen. Another cons I would mention is that the audio interface is only at up to 44.1 kHz, where I typically record at 48 kilohertz. I would also mention that I have experienced a few problems upgrading the firmware. Basically, when I tried to upgrade the firmware, I received a lot of errors and I was not able to do it. I repeated the procedure many times and at the end it worked. But man, I lost a lot of time. As regards the latency, three milliseconds are fine even if this pedal is meant to be paired with other devices and therefore you have to take into consideration your overall rig. This pedal has 3 milliseconds of latency but you have to connect it for instance to a delay which can add even more latency or you can have a wireless system with more latency etc. Therefore you have to take into consideration the latency of your overall system. For more info, you can check out the videos in the card above. All in all, I think this is a great unit. It sounds good and its main strengths are obviously the possibility to load the profiles of your amps, then the possibility to pair the tonics with other pedals obtaining a pretty personal tone. Please let me know in the comment section below your precious and valuable opinions. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you want to actually help me to make more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.